Hey, hey, how are you doing, everybody? It is Tuesday. It's Fat Tuesday. As a matter of fact, the fifth day of March 2019, this is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Thanks for starting your day with us here on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. Busy show for today. Lots going on on another wintry day. It's the winter that won't go away. Now, of course, it had a late start. I mean, December was mild and dry, and January was mild and dry. Then along came February, and and Mother Nature went, oh, that's right, it's winter. I better give you some winter. <clears throat> we appreciate that, Mother Nature, but, I mean, come on. Enough is enough. We set a new record yesterday. In fact, for two days in a row, we've now set a record for uh, low temperature, the record low temperature yesterday. Four degrees was what we got to, down to four degrees on Monday. The old record was six degrees, which is set back in 1960. In fact, our normal low for this date and this time of the year is 31 degrees, which is going to be our afternoon high. That's, this is how crazy this weather has been. Uh, normal low 31 degrees, so yesterday we were 27 degrees below normal. Our high on Monday was 26 degrees. Our normal high should be 49, 23 degrees below normal. And because we keep track of these things, we now have had 32 consecutive days with a high temperature below what it should be. And I'm not talking just below by a couple of degrees. I'm talking below by 15 degrees, by 20 degrees below what it used to be. And believe it or not, they have upped the ante on snow. We'll talk about that when we get to the weather forecast. We have the latest news to get to. Sports, spring sports for high school is way behind schedule because it's hard to play golf and baseball and softball and soccer when your field is covered with snow. We can cram a bunch of sports in, whatever we can get for you. We also have the obscure holiday today in history, birthdays. Everyone is entitled to Mike Minotti's opinion. And in the conversation portion of this program, Corey Batista and Kate Brantner came in last Thursday to talk about my girlfriend's closet. It's back for the 10th year. It's a huge, huge deal that the Women's Service League has been putting on now for a decade. Corey and Kate will be my guests in the second half of the program. You don't want to miss that. It's a huge deal. All right, let's take you around the valley at three minutes after the hour. See what uh, see what we got going with our SkyFi cameras, courtesy of Local Tell's SkyFi High Speed Wireless. That of course means that you can have super fast internet at your house or your cabin or your vacation home without having to have fiber run to your home. Give them a call, find out all about it. The cross camera bats lead off. I love the baseball idiom there. Good morning, Wenatchee. Good morning, East Wenatchee. Lots of snow. See, this is you look at that and you're thinking, okay, this is mid-January, not early March. And this snow is not going to go anywhere. We're just chilly and it's going to be dry today. That's going to change, by the way. Kind of a mixture of sun and clouds is what we have today. And so we're going to have most of the day today. Certainly a lot, uh, the air quality is a lot better because yesterday at this time with the Bluebird fire out there in Peshasta and that smoke was coming right down to the Wenatchee Valley and hanging around. Don't have that today. Camera two, where are we going, Megan? <coughs> Megan says it's off to a Rondo Rock again. Looking down the Columbia River, Turtle Rock, plainly in view. You can see you can see Mission Ridge looking pretty good. They've had a lot of snow, too. They had 71 inches of snow in the month of February of Mission Ridgeway. So there you go. That's a good shot of uh, the Columbia River. You can't quite make out Rocky Reach Dam. Uh, you can make out the very tip of the Omi Gardens area. And Turtle Rock, of course, which is called Turtle Rock because it looks like a giant rock. Camera number three is a shot of, oh, Megan threw a, she, she threw a fast one at me here. Okay, I got to look. I see the, I'm looking at the, I give up, Megan. Oh, that's Rock Island. You moved the camera on me. Oh, well, shame on me. Good morning, Rock Island. Well, you know, now I make it out. I can see the Columbia River. Usually I can always tell the Rock Island camera because I can see the golf course or but uh, yeah, okay, rock on, and that, that's super easy to take out. Jump off ridge way in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. You can see the heights in beautiful Rock Island. And finally, camera four. We're going to say hello to, oh, I know this one. I know this one. McNeil Canyon. Is that right? Chelan? Well, okay, I think that's at the, actually at the top of McNeil Canyon, though. Looking, that's Lake Chelan in the middle, uh, in the Chelan area. So uh, it's not bad, considering I have to guess. I love these cameras, and we have so many of them, and we can move them. And every once in a while, I just don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Somebody write that down and put it on a T-shirt. So that's what we're looking at on this uh, Tuesday morning. It is five minutes after the hour. 
Let's take a look at your weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Again, chilly and dry today. And then we have a little winter storm system that's going to move into the region tonight. The one thing that's changed from uh, yesterday at this time is that we're going to get a little bit more snow than they were anticipating. We have a slide to show you. This was sent to us from the National Weather Service not more than 45 minutes ago. This is your snowfall total for today into Wednesday. So take a look at what you where you see is where you live, and that's your snow totals. We were thinking an inch, no more than an inch. Now they're thinking we could maybe even get a couple of inches of snow. So about a, about a half an inch tonight, about an inch on Wednesday, and an additional half an inch on Wednesday night spilling into Thursday. So a little bit more, not a big snowfall, obviously, but maybe uh, maybe a half an inch to an inch more snow than they were thinking um, yesterday at this time. So a little bit more snow, still cold. In fact, uh, this is what the temperature is going to look like over the next couple of weeks. This is going to take you from today into, well, the next couple of weeks for the month of March. Uh, there you go. How long is this cold going to persist? At least another couple of weeks. This is your 14-day uh, outlook from March 11th through the 17th. You see the blue over, uh, the, to your left is the precipitation potential, I mean is the temperature, and to the right is precipitation. So temperature to your left, uh, precipitation to your right. As you can see, blue means colder than normal temperatures. Now that's for the next couple of weeks. For the month of March in its entirety, still cold. For the entire month of March, the odds of colder temperatures, colder than normal, actually increase with uh, average precipitation. So we are just stuck in this Arctic weather and it's not going to go anywhere. Our high today, 30 degrees, is actually 2 degrees below what is supposed to be our afternoon high. This is how cold it's getting. Again, about a half an inch of snow possible tonight. Around an inch of snow on Wednesday. Got a 70% chance of snow on Wednesday. Kind of off and on snowflakes. Uh, chance of snow goes down to 40%, but we could still get another half an inch. So when this whole thing is said and done by Thursday morning, anywhere between an inch to two inches of snow here in the Wenatchee Valley. By the way, up in Chelan and Manson, Omak, Okanagan, you're going to get more snow, as is the Methow Valley here in the Wenatchee Valley, upwards of a couple of inches of snow. Then we have some partly sunny skies, partly sunny, partly cloudy, 38 degrees, which is going to feel balmy, but that's still 10 degrees below normal. I mean, it's still cold. Patchy freezing fog on uh, Friday burns off to sunshine and a high of 36. The weekend, look at that, 32, 35, 33. That's all. These are supposed to be overnight lows instead of afternoon highs. And as you can see, we're just stuck in this Arctic air mass, and it just is not going anywhere for the, for the month. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Let's take you up to the major mountain passes, see what's going on there. Live shot of I-90, Snoqualmie Pass right now. No advisories, no restrictions, the roadway pretty much bare and dry with some ice in places. On Stevens Pass, no advisories, no restrictions, the roadway is bare and wet. Live shot of Stevens. Clear skies up above. Blue, it looks good, too. Let's see what US 97 looks like. It looks just like that. Nothing. No problems at all. Roadway is bare and dry. As far as snow in the major mountain passes, about a half an inch possible tonight. There's no snow at all in the forecast today. <clears throat> a little bit of snow tonight. About an inch on Wednesday. A couple of inches, maybe, Wednesday night. Another inch or so Thursday. One or two inches on Thursday night. They're not expecting a significant snowfall in the major mountain passes. Certainly uh, enough to keep the plows ahead of the game. So a little snow here, a little snow there all the way through Friday. Nothing big. No snow at all, by the way, expected in the major mountain passes. Today it looks like you're good to go. Nine minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got your Tuesday morning news. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live this morning from Studio 42 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. 
everyone. Did you know that the NCW Life Channel is North Central Washington's go-to source for news? No matter how you prefer to view your news, NCW Life has you covered. Watch the evening news weeknights on TV, stream it, read it at ncwlife.com, or catch the latest news by following us on Facebook. Stay informed with local news, sports, weather, and shows featuring local people and events. NCW Life, a reflection and a spotlight of the communities we call home. Ten minutes after the hour on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We are live here from our studios in downtown Wenatchee. I'm Dan Koontz. Overcast skies 19 degrees. Overcast for the most part high today of only around 31 or 32. Well below normal temperatures for the foreseeable future. And some light snow in the forecast from tonight into early Thursday morning. Here's what's making news. The results of a third party investigation into the death of a Rock Island dam worker last summer faults the Chelan County PUD. For the accident, Harold Malkin with the law firm Lane Powell presented his findings to PUD commissioners yesterday morning. Ed Bromley was killed last June when he was struck by a steel swing rail while crane testing near one of the dam spill gates. Malkin cites two main causes for the accident. The first is an inherent and in recent years unrecognized weakness in the design of the swing rails deployed, as Kirk mentioned, at 11 of Rock Island's 31 spillway bays, including Gate 17, where Mr. Bromley was struck and killed. The second finding, the second cause, is the district's failure to promptly and formally document and adequately address swing rail related safety concerns, which credible and recently identified evidence suggests were first raised back in the mid-1990s, shortly after swing rails were added at Rock Island for the very first time. PUD General Manager Steve Wright reported that the changes and cha changes have been made to address the findings of the investigation. Since uh, June 13th, we've uh, taken action to implement interim design changes and new operational procedures that reduce the risk of a similar incident. We feel reasonably confident today that the uh, same thing could not happen again, uh, but I would call those interim fixes. Uh, there are many recommendations in this report uh, that can reduce risk. We are actively implementing the affirmative recommendations and considering those that were recommended for additional evaluation. I would add importantly that we are also thinking about this not just in terms of hydro system uh, operations out of Rock Island, but more generally, what can we learn from this that will help us in terms of procedures across the district? Bromley's death also resulted in the PUD being fined $6,000 by the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries. The eight month long investigation report, by the way, is available for you to read on the PUD's website. Well, in addition to dozens of written objections from residents, an official appeal has been filed in an effort to stop construction of the Leavenworth Adventure Park. On Friday, Friday was the deadline, by the way, to appeal the City of Leavenworth's conditional approval of the project. Friends of Leavenworth raised legal objections through their attorney, Robert Dodge. They cite several issues, including parking, traffic, noise, and the aesthetics of the park. The proposed 10-acre park would include an alpine coaster and other attractions on a hillside at the junction of Icicle Road and Highway 2. The project has been controversial from the start after numerous objections last summer. Developer John Sutherland withdrew and then resubmitted his application with numerous mitigation requirements. It has cleared most of the city and state environmental hurdles. Well, former Mayor Jeff Gomes have been select, has been selected as Kashmir's Citizen of the Year by the Chamber of Commerce. Gomes will be honored along with other honorees, including the Business of the Year, Jerry's Auto Supply at the Chamber's annual banquet. Gomes is being recognized for his public service and community involvement. He served as Kashmir's fire chief prior to becoming mayor for six and a half years. The Chamber has also picked the Kashmir Public Library to receive their first ever Best Community Service Award. The banquet will be held April 19th at the Chelan County Expo Center. Tickets are available at the Chamber offer office. And finally, this morning, Executive Director Matt Cadman is at the Numerica Performing Arts Center for a couple more weeks before he moves on to what he says, Act Three of his life. Matt was a guest on Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike McDotty yesterday morning, and he talked about his time 
at the local nonprofit and community arts center. This is bigger than a traditional theater. This right. is a community center, right. and we ought to be one of the cultural anchors of the valley. So if we did anything right, it was that we immediately turned the theater into outreach, mm -hmm. more than it had been done before. I mean, our real priority was outreach. So we started a program called Every Kids at the Pack. Right, remember every that? Kid, yeah. Every Kid at the Pack has um, gone crazy. 17,000 kids have attended a show at the Pack for free yeah. uh, because of sponsors and donors from the community who stepped up and saw it was beautiful. Okay, now here's the question, though. I mean, your passion for this is obvious, okay? Who's going to... Why are you leaving? <laughs> Why am I leaving? Yeah. Well, my parole is up, frankly, and my community service hours don't... No. <laughs> I told you before, he's, he's fulfilled his community <laughs> yeah. service. So. I'm back to... I'm out of here. Uh, all things must pass. Yeah, okay. When I took the job, I thought it would be a three to five year transition because I had long-term goals that I thought would take five years. Yeah. And this is my sixth year. Yeah. And frankly, I've accomplished most everything on that original list, which is exciting. I am, I, I wish, I, I don't know if you ever are totally happy with the things are, but I, I wish that we, I could have attained sustainable growth to a deeper degree than we are. But in almost every other category, we have uh, either met the target I set or surpassed it. Okay, well, who is going to... Uh, the gonna Board of Directors, place? when I announced my retirement in January, yeah. um, I gave a two-month notice, which is probably really, really long. Right. But I wanted to have the Board have a chance to have a smooth transition because I realized that this is a very unique position. Um, and given where we are and where we were, who knows where it's going to be in another five years. So yeah. they're looking for the future for certainly not a Matt Cadman, but somebody who can take the baton and go further. Yeah, so, exactly. That's exactly what they do. Right. So. Uh, believe me, nobody needs another Matt Cadman. So <laughs> ask him. I don't know. Uh, not this is definitely um, a very difficult decision and a very emotional decision, but I do want everyone out there to know that um, you are entirely the reason that the Numerica Pack has reached such heights. And once I leave, I'm just so hopeful and so um, confident that you'll continue to support the Numerica Pack with the same gusto and verve that you have before. This is a place, one of the great community anchors of our town and a great community trophy. So thank you so much for all the support you've given me and for our precious little theater. And I wish you all well in the next act. Of course, Street Talk and other stuff with Mike Mad Dog Magnotti airs every Monday live at 10 o'clock with various repeats throughout the course of the week. Check local listings. In fact, go to our website and you can download our entire weekly schedule. So if you're not really show, sh sure when the show that you want to watch is on, if you go to our website, you can download the program. It's a PDF file. You can pop it right on your desktop and there it is. You can find out when all of your favorite programs air here on the NCW Life Pro channel. Uh, my personal favorite program is the news, because that way I can figure out what the heck happened. And you can watch the news as well. Grant Olson in the anchor chair, Eric Granstrom with sports. And Grant also handles the weather forecast, by the way, and does it quite well. The news with Grant Olson at 5, 6, and 10. 5, 6, and 10 on television, as we like to say in the business, TV. You can also watch it uh, streaming live at 5, 6, and 10 on our website, or you can watch it on demand. It's available for you to peruse whenever you darn well want to. You can just sit at home in your bathroom and say, I'm going to watch the news right now. And you can just click on it, and there you go. Go to ncblife.com. You can also drop us a note by going to our website or our Facebook page or our Twitter handle. Or our email address is news at ncblife.com. Or you can just message us on Facebook, whatever the case may be. All right, 19 minutes after the hour, we're going to take a break. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley, live from Studio 2 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life channel. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian. And this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. 
you'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together, we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. We're back on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up Financial Valley. I'm Dan Koontz, 20 minutes after the hour. Sports, Financial Valley, going to spend the next few days touring at West Kelowna's Royal LePage Place Ice Arena. They're trying to win their best of seven BCHL playoff series against the Warriors after winning a crazy game one on Saturday, 5-4. to four. Now the Wilds stubbed their collective toe on Sunday, lost 5-1. to one. Our checker had the call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Stratton on the left wing, cuts across, high slot, spins, shot through traffic. Loose puck at the side of the net, picked up and lobbed out through center, and this could be a breakaway, and here comes Tilsley in alone. Shoots and he scores! Kevin Tilsley picked up the puck after the Wild were crashing in around the goaltender at the other end. Bouncing puck as he's bumped by Modry, and Dollywall comes along. Dropped off his Cullen shot and a score! Park had a piece of it, and somehow it rolled through. That puck seemed to somehow magically go right through his body. Slowed by Sandquist, and then Cook tried rolling in front, shot on a score. Got turned over back behind the net, thrown out in front in the quick redirection, caught Sandquist as he was pushing from side to side and it crawled up underneath him. Chase Dubois puts the Warriors up now three to nothing. Cook banks it off the back wall, but Waiting for it, there was Bulaka. Now a centering feed shot and a score. Dubois on the doorstep as the Wild play it sloppily in their own end. And the quick turnover tossed out in front. Dubois hammers it home on the doorstep as Arnold in the crease area got a stick on it. Then Dorsey down low, centering feed shot, score! Blake Barter. A nice couple of crisp passes down low in the right wing corner. And Barger rocketed the one-timer high on the blocker side. And the Wilder on the board. They now trail 4-1. to one. Sasaki was there, but it took a weird hop off the boards. Eventually over to Cullen and then fired towards the front. Tilsley shot off the outside of the net, centered out front. And where is it? Is it in the goal lights on? And it's in behind Sanquist. It is in the net, and that's a goal. Are able to take a split on the road. You, in effect, take away home ice advantage, which the Wild worked hard to earn. But in the span of a couple of days, it's just the nature of nature of sport. And there's a late, a late bit of shoving over in the corner as Tilsley was bumped into, not hard, but Tellier made contact with him as the puck went into the corner, and so some shoving follows, but. The linesman quickly step in between and pull everyone apart, and that'll be that. Royal LePage Place is a 1,500-seat arena that wasn't too kind for Wenatchee during the regular season. In fact, the Wild went one and two on the road at West Kelowna. A win tonight would be their first at that facility in 171 days. Our checker will again have the call. You can hear it locally on 560 AM KPQ. You can watch it on HockeyTV.com for a nominal prescription fee. Parents of athletes and the athletes, they already know, but you might not. Hey, it's spring sports. Yeah, spring sports. We got snow, we got cold, but hey, local high schools have been practicing indoors for the most part for the last couple of weeks. Game scheduled to begin this week. Of course, everything is subject to change. Cashmere has already canceled baseball games that were slated for Saturday. Several other baseball and softball jamborees have either been postponed or canceled. And since the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee is the only field free of snow this week, and it's going to be real busy over the next weekend or so. Eastmont's home soccer match against Central Valley is going to be played Friday at 3 at the Apple Bowl, and that'll be followed by Wenatchee's scheduled game with Meade at 7. Then on Saturday, Wenatchee will play Central Valley in soccer at 11, and Eastmont will follow against Meade at 3. And then at 5.30 Saturday, Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse will host Skyline in their first game 
of the season. Hey, speaking of schedules, our spring sports schedule is out. Now, we hope to begin this week, but we, we're not because we pushed back our broadcast schedule. We want warmer weather. We don't want our gear and our crews to freeze to death. So it begins next Tuesday when actually hosts Quincy Boys Soccer, leave off the field of the Apple Bowl. Then we'll be at Walla Walla Point Park, we hope, for girls softball between Wenatchee and Cascade. Back with soccer next Friday, Eastmont hosts Sunnyside at 7. A week from Saturday will be our first baseball game. Keep your fingers crossed. Eastmont will host Sumner at Dan White Field. Again, because of the weather and the field conditions, everything is subject to change. You can go to our website, by the way, to see our entire spring broadcast schedule. We have 24 events scheduled between now and May. Our broadcast crew, the award-winning Eric Grandstrom, Sebastian Maraga, and Matt Weiser will be doing soccer as usual. The voice of the Apple Sox, by the way, Joel Norman, is going to be joining us to do some baseball and softball. All we need is Mother Nature to cooperate. Oh, you can always go down to Peoria, Arizona, and check out the Mariners. Uh, then after knocking off Arizona Sunday 7-3, Seattle had the day off yesterday. The Mariners did. It was their only day off, in fact, of the entire Spring season, they're back at it today against the team they share their facility with, San Diego. Mike Link will start 12-10 first pitch. Seattle just a week and a half. Then they travel to Japan for a couple of exhibition games against San Francisco. Then the opening of the season, the earliest opening day ever in Major League Baseball history, they'll take on Oakland in Tokyo March 20th. And those are just some of the games that people are playing or not playing, as the case may be. 26 minutes after the hour, the obscure holiday today on March 5th is Learn What Your Name Means Day. Your name means something. Your first name means something. Your last name means something. Whether it's, uh, and I looked this up. There's a website. What does my name mean? It just pops right up. So I thought, what does Dan mean? Well, they don't use Dan. They use Daniel. Uh, it's, first of all, it's Hebrew in origin. I didn't know that. And Daniel means wise and upright judge. Can't think of anything better than that. Megan just laughed at me in my earpiece. I'm going to find out what Megan means when I get off here. Learn what your name means day to day. Hopefully it means upright and learner judge or something along those lines. That's what my name means anyway. 27 minutes after the hour. Today in history. This is the 249th anniversary of the Boston Massacre. John Adams considered this the foundation of American independence. He, he thought, as far as John Adams was concerned, and he was an expert, he was hanging around Boston back in 1770. He said this really was the beginning of the Revolutionary War. Of course, five Americans shot to death by British troops in an event that would contribute to the outbreak of the Revolutionary War. John Adams said if there's an actual beginning day, this is probably it, March 5th, 1770, the Boston Massacre. 66 years ago today, after 29 years of running the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin keeled over. He had a stroke like four days before. Nobody knew about it, of course. Kind of kept that a little secret. They could do that back in those days. Joseph Stalin uh, passed away on March 5th, 1953. Uh, after 29 years of the undisputed dictator of the Soviet Union, and we don't miss him at all. And I can't make this stuff up. This is the 46th anniversary. You see that? Two Yankees disclose family exchange from the New York Times. Mike Kekich and Fritz Peterson, best friends, they decided that they were in love with each other's wives. So in a press conference, uh, they announced that they had traded wives, children, even the family dogs. Kind of an interesting trade, most interesting trade in baseball history. They swapped families. Uh, eventually, the individual couples got divorced and they married the other couple. Uh, for Kikich and the former Mrs. Peterson, they were only married for a couple of years and they parted ways and it never quite worked out. Uh, for the Petersons, however, it worked out pretty well. They got married eventually and they're still married to this day, for over 40 years. Uh, they adopted the, other, the two kids that they, that, the, that they had from the previous husbands and they had four children of their own. They were going to make a movie out of this apparently called Simply the Trade. You can't make this up, stuff up. Mike Kekich and Fritz Peterson of the New York Yankees Left-handed pitchers swapped families on this date back in 1973. And finally, we've got some birthdays to get to you. Speaking of birthdays, you might remember Del Crandall, manager of the Seattle Mariners for a little while back in 83 and 84. One of the best catchers in baseball back in his playing days in the 50s and 60s. Del Crandall's claim to fame, he's the only man to catch three no-hitters. We always talk about throwing no-hitters, but somebody's got to catch them or the ball rolls to the backstop. 
He was the only man in history to have caught three no-hitters. Del Crandall is 89 years old today, and Penn Gillette celebrates birthday number 64. He's a magician, an illusionist. He's, he can, he's a juggler. He's a comedian. He's an author. He's a musician. He's a filmmaker, an actor, a television personality. Penn Gillette is 64. By the way, read his books. They're really good. I rather enjoy them. Uh, all right, let's move forward. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. Then my conversation with Corey Batista and Kate Brantner, my girlfriend's closet, is back. It's a ginormously huge event. You're going to learn all about it. When we come back, you're watching Michael Financial Valley on the NCW Live channel. If you're stuck trying to find the perfect beer for you, look no further than Badger Mountain Brewing. We specialize in creating tantalizing craft beers that will soothe any picky taste buds and will satisfy your cravings. Check out everything from our amazing honey blonde that will appease even the most finicky taster or a delicious frothy stout for dark beer lovers. Experience them all at Badger Mountain Brewing. SkillSource specializes in assessing and guiding youth, adults, and laid-off workers who want to improve their skills. Here you can attend in-depth workshops to assess skills and interests, make career plans, and learn computer basics. Learning centers provide eligible youth and adults individualized computer-assisted basic education. Vocational training is arranged with approved providers like community colleges or on the job with businesses. Don't wait any longer. Let's get working on the future you've been dreaming about. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill in East Wenatchee. Open seven days a week, Highlander Grill offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in or take it to go, our friendly staff is here to serve you. Reservations recommended for Friday night's prime rib dinner. Call for live music dates. Hi, I'm Shalane, site coordinator for Highlander Grill. Give me a call to schedule your event today. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. This is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, the Clinton weapons ban, which ran for 10 years uh, beginning on September 13, 1994, only applied to weapons manufactured after the date of the ban's enactment, and it expired on September 13, 2004. The act also included a grandfather clause that allowed the possession and transfer of weapons and ammunition that were lawfully possessed on the date of the enactment. Okay, all right, I know. I mention this because many folks think school shootings will be reduced or deterred by a reenactment of this type of weapons ban. Did a ban like this actually have any effect on deterring school shootings? Well, that depends on what you read. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion.
There's no substitute for the power of cable TV advertising. With Solely on Cable TV Advertising, you can reach your target audience right here in North Central Washington. We understand their viewing habits and can precisely target your customers on great cable networks like these. Call Solely on Broadcasting today and let us show you how to put your business message right in front of thousands of prospects at a very affordable price. Solely on Broadcasting, 509-888-2020. Hi, I'm Kevin Prosser, and this is my print shop, Color Effects in Cashmere. Color Effects offers screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing on t shirts, jerseys, bags, banners, signs, and more. With 30 years' experience, you won't be disappointed with the quality and quick turnaround times you will get at more than a fair price. Please call Color Effects. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Club Crow is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow Saturday nights. We have live bands to rock the night away. Club Crow is bringing comedy to Cashmere. Check out our Facebook page for upcoming dates. Live jam session, first Sunday of every month. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I love it when one of the local service organizations does something that ends in the word annual because the annual implies that they've done it before and it worked and they're going to do it again. And for the last 10 years, the Women's Service League has been putting together My Girlfriend's Closet and they come on this program to talk about it. They actually came back. That's a rare thing indeed. To my far left, she's been on this program before, Corey Batista, part of the Women's Service League. And to my immediate left, making her debut... Is Yay. Kate Brantner. We're here to talk about my girlfriend's <laughs> closet and a couple of other things that are in the hopper for the ladies. Welcome to the program. Thanks Thank for doing you. this. Thank you for Good to see you again. Yes, definitely. Good to see you again. What do you think so far, Kate? You've never been on TV. You impressed? I am impressed. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Well, that, that's very a, happy to be here. That's going to end here in about the next 15 minutes or so. <laughs> no. Uh, my girlfriend's closet. If you're unfamiliar with it, um, well, give us give us a little bit of the history, Corey, and what's it all about? My girlfriend's closet. It's been a huge success. Talk well, about it. my girlfriend's closet started 10 years ago. Uh, Lisa Trom, uh, who is a Wenatchee local, actually dreamed up this event. Uh, basically, it's called my girlfriend's closet because it's clothes, shoes, jewelry, accessories coming out of all of our closets and we put, the, put it into a store, we store, we tag, we merchandise and then we sell, the, uh, sell everything to help make money to help those in the community. So it started out in a very small um, uh, storefront downtown, I think it was where, where Bella Sarah was mm -hmm. and it has grown leaps and bounds over the last few years. It's been a tremendous success and again they give all the money away uh, we have some photos, as a matter of fact, that Corey brought along with her to, about my girlfriend's closet. Um, throw one of those up, Megan. It doesn't matter which one it is. We'll just look at one, and Corey and uh, Kate can tell <coughs> us what we're looking at. There you go. Look at those happy people. <laughs> that was what, happy. probably three, four years ago now? That was last year. That was last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of ladies in a lot of clothes. But you weren't getting it all. This is perfect for the professional woman, isn't it, who always has to have a new outfit and look, you know, I mean, and you go through things and... It's good for women and it's good for teenagers. Right. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. Do you think that 10 years ago that it was actually going to, in fact, we have a photo of the very first My Girlfriend's Closet committee from 10 years ago. Did anybody have any idea this was going to just uh, I don't think they now? ever did. It started with, you know, let's have a fun, you know, preview party, uh, get together, and then everybody would just shop the next day. Uh, I have, I, you know, Kelly Kennedy came up with the um, party part. Lisa Trom came up with the shopping part. And I don't think either of them ever envisioned yeah. that it would be this big. And now it's actually a three-part event. Wow. So we start out with the preview party, which is Thursday, March mm -hmm. 14th. Um, and that's the hottest ticket in town. It is. Uh, you got to get out and get yep. one. Those are on sale right now, right? They're on sale. They're on sale right now at the UPS store, $40 a piece. And that gets you first dibs into uh, getting a chance to purchase the designer items uh, yes. that are on the shelves. And it gets you uh, catering from Ravenous mm -hmm. and wine from Piranha States. I'm all over that. Yeah, can I go? go. Uh, is yeah. it just guys only? I mean, ladies only? Guys, you know, yeah. guys can come. They should buy <laughs> yeah. tickets to buy for their significant others. For their significant yes. others. And so that is a ticketed event. That's the first part of our event. 
And then Friday, March 15th, we actually open to the public. Uh, we are open from 9 to 7, uh, Friday and Saturday. And then the third part of our event, which is really kind of our favorite, mm -hmm. is what we call the free shop. And so that's where we invite women from the different organizations, nonprofit organizations that we help, to come in and shop for free. So we, I believe we have about 300 women and, and teens. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All of this this gives you an idea of how much how big this event has gotten. You have to move it to the old Hastings building, we which, do. which has a ton of square we were footage. We fortunate to get the Hastings building. Yes. Yeah. That's we good. were in about 8,000 square feet last year, and now we're in 30, I think. Wow. <laughs> we have lots of room. That's all the information you see on the screen. Uh, is there, for the, for the preview party, the first dibs, the 40 bucks, the food, the wine, is that a limited ticketed event, or are you going to sell as many tickets as you can sell? It's a limited ticket event. So yeah. how many tickets are up for grabs we for 40 about, bucks a pop? We have about 200, about, maybe about 100 more tickets to sell. Okay, and they went on sale February 22nd, yes. so this is, you can't procrastinate. We, you no. cannot procrastinate. 160 tickets sold the first day, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And we need to stress this. These are nice clothes. These, these are, are really indeed. nice clothes. These are these designer are, clothes, yes. Good, good brand names and names you're familiar with, mm -hmm. brands you know. We have lots. I was down there last night. Uh, we have many things uh, that are coach, coach handbags. Gorgeous coat shoes, shoes. Um, designer denim. That was one of the big things when this started out that was very popular. Um, we have a lot of name brand design, designer denim. We have ch a Chico's rack. We've even grown into wedding dresses, yes. maternity, plus sizes. We have everything. How does this all, who organizes this? Logistically, this must be insane. <laughs> Kate, it is, what, it is insane. How, did, how long have you been, what, two, three months doing this? I mean, yes. Well, it's all year sorting. Right. We sort all year, but it's about three months in the making wow. to get it together. And they they figure at least a hundred hours or more a person. And everybody uh, from the Women's Service League, one way or the other, is involved in this. They're 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 because this is a huge thing, and they're in on it. Yeah, and the other the other important thing to note too is that this event is a very sustainable event as far as reusing, recycling, giving back. Uh, you know, Kate and her team sort through you know pounds and pounds of clothes and things and, and the things that don't make the cut to first and second day items, uh, they actually go into the textile collection, which is through the, the Wenatchee High School Golden Apple Band. They have a fundraiser of textiles. And so the things that don't make the cut with us go to them, they get fundraising money, and then the items get reused, resold, recycled, you know, out again. Perfect timing because they're going to Disneyland for spring break, and they that costs are. money. So that's, that's right are. on the money. Uh, go ahead, Kate. I can also, I can say that sometimes we get men's clothing or we get children's clothing, and that all goes to a place also. Okay. The children's clothing goes to community center, and I take it over to the, power, the men's clothing and the warm clothing that we don't use to sell to Powerhouse Ministries okay. uh, in East Wenatchee, and that's homeless people. How, um, how is it organized? I mean, when, you, when, when a girl comes into my girlfriend's closet, either the preview or the, or the big thing, uh, is it sorted by types of clothing or brand names, or, or how is it, is it? It's just like going into a store. We okay. have big racks of small, medium, large, sleeveless, short sleeve, long sleeve, designer, dressy, mm -hmm. casual. It's just like a store. Just like, and, and how yeah. does it? How does the pricing thing work out? How how do you decide what is? <laughs> the pricing is very, very good. It, it's a little higher than New York sale, but yeah, uh, I think the very highest priced item was. Did we have something for thirty dollars last year? Maybe a, a couple. Dress? Maybe a couple that, items. That would be the okay. highest, and that's a dress that might cost two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. People who uh, shop at Goodwill a lot have told us that we are under actually under yes. Goodwill. Yes. Okay. Um, but our the, the clothes, the quality of clothes that we have out are there is better. is incredible. Um, this big pre show thing uh, for the, the first come, first serve on the with the wine and the forty bucks of it. Yes. Is that uh is that kind of become <laughs> a party? It does. It sounds like it's just a bunch of ladies just having a really good time. It does. It's a shopping frenzy. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have come year after year after year. Uh, in fact, uh, when we opened our ticket sales last Friday down at the UPS store, I was waiting in my car, waiting for the um, doors of the UPS stores to open. That's where you can actually buy the tickets. Uh, 
I saw these men that were lining up outside the door, and I thought, gee, what, what's so exciting about picking up mail in the morning? You know, what's the big deal? And so then I go into the store, and I set up my little ticket counter, and all the men converged around me. Oh, they had yes. checks from wives and friends, and they were all, they, everybody had been That's sent down there to buy wow. tickets. So yeah, That's it's a, great. Yeah, it's a, it's a great event. People enjoy the food and wine, but, and mm. that actually keeps them going. Mm -hmm. You shop. You take a break right. and you go back. <laughs> and this year, Corey, it's our 10-year anniversary, so yes. Corey's going to have a display set up of past parties and other history yes. of my mm -hmm. girlfriend's closet. Yes, kind so of how it evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. We have space for people to sit and take a little break. And Speaking of evolving over the years, and I didn't want to bring this up, but I, I, you sent me some notes, Corey, and Callie, <laughs> Callie Klein is supposed to be here. She's a little under the weather. You're doing a great job, by the way, Kate. Thank you. There's a typo. Uh, it says here, over the last 10 years, you've raised over... Five hundred thousand uh, dollars giving back to the community. That can't possibly be right. It can possibly be. Get out of town. Yeah, last That's a lot of money. last year we grossed sixty-eight thousand. Sixty-eight, and this year we're going to top that. And we're going to top that this year. Yeah, yeah 70, six, sixty-eight thousand in twenty-four hours of shopping. I mean, that's <laughs> yes. unheard of. <laughs> yeah. In clothes and shoes. In clothes and shoes. <laughs> and that's jewelry. a that's jewelry. a lot of money. That's that's. I mean, kudos to the women <laughs> yes. for that. That's just a that's a lot of money. Well, How people people know us now to where they they actually save their clothes and save their donations uh -huh. to give to this event because that they know that their donations are you know respected. You know they know that other people will enjoy them. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually meet needs for the people that come and shop for free, and it is yeah. it is super common to have um, people around town and you walk up to somebody and say, oh, I love your purse, or oh, I love that shirt. And more often than not now, people say, I got it in my girlfriend's closet. So it's something that people are very proud, you know, to have you know, purchased something. And can I mention the auction tables? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, please touched do. on that. Because we have beautiful jewelry, Brighton jewelry, and like um, Corey said, purses mm -hmm. that are like new. Only the very, the very, very best and new go on the auction table. But that's a lot of fun. That can get to be a war. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still collecting. We are still, okay. collecting, we're still collecting items. Okay. So even yeah. if you haven't cleaned your closet yet, it's freezing cold outside. It's a great time to stay inside, clean your closet, clean out the shoes, the jewelry box. Uh, we're still taking donations. You can drop those off at uh, Brad Huddle Allstate, uh, Town Toyota in East Wenatchee, and Town Chrysler Dodge in Wenatchee. Or follow us on Facebook, yes. and there's actually a schedule of when you can drop it off at the Hastings mm -hmm. building. And you can't do this without sponsors. I don't want to put you on, on the no. on the thing no. for naming sponsors. If you if you want to, you want to get absolutely, hand out some kudos, absolutely, go right ahead. absolutely. Premier One Properties has mm -hmm. uh, been our headline sponsor for a number of years. Uh, we are so grateful to our friends uh, at Premier One Properties, and then we also want to thank uh, Confluence Health. Yes. Patriot Plumbing, uh, Banner Bank, and Washington Trust Bank. Ah. So we could not do it without them. And uh, here's a list of all the of all the beneficiaries. We mentioned before they sell all these clothes over this three day period, and they just give all the money away to the people who need it. Uh, Women's Resource Center, Serve Wenatchee Valley, United Methodist Church, uh, Upper Valley Upper Valley Upper Valley Mend, uh, Christian Lighthouse Ministry. How, how do you make these decisions on who gets the dough? How does you have to sit down and split it all up? So it's how actually you? a grant process. Okay. Um, and so these nonprofit organizations that uh, are in line with our vision and our focus of helping homeless uh, women and children, um, they can actually visit our website, or they do, uh, www.wslncw.org. Uh, there's actually grant applications on there. They can apply by email or straight through the website. And then there's a whole committee of people that then go mm -hmm. through, based on the amount of money that we've made, um, go through and then allocate um, money to these organizations. And it's also interesting to note, too, that uh, we do give quite a bit of money to the homeless education programs within the school districts. Uh, Wenatchee High School, Eastmont, um, and uh, Westside. Okay. So a lot of the, the schools actually have uh, pantries um, that help kids. Uh, the money can also go to help them with ASB cards and all sorts of things. So um, that's not that's something that's not always talked about that oh, our money wow, does go nice. to. And speaking of the schools, we have scholarships too. Wow. So our money actually uh, goes to um, our three scholarships. We have one through the Community Foundation for High School Seniors. So any high school senior that's going through that process, our scholarship is through that organization. And then we actually have two uh, $1,000 scholarships that go to uh, women who are returning to school. 
Okay. Maybe they've hit some hardships or had to take a break along the way, but these women are looking to get um, back into their education, you know, to well, you know better. It's their funny lives. that you mentioned this because this is a great if you're new to the job market and you you want you go to a job interview, you want to make a really good impression. Mm -hmm. At my girlfriend's closet, you can probably get some pretty good stuff to really, Very really nice. spring yourself up and really sell yourself well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and during the free shop, we actually, um, our members actually help um, the women that come in that are, you know, maybe looking for specific things that need, you know, to find jobs or put things together. So um, our whole team of women, you know, help with that as well. You like doing this, don't you, Kate? I can tell. I love doing you this. Kate yes. is amazing. Yeah. I I love the promotion part, but what she and her other co-chair uh, Sue Epic do down there with She's the mountains of sorting and merchandising, it is spectacular what they do. Where do you get all the racks to hang the clothes on? There's a question right there. We have gathered them yeah. through the years, and mm -hmm. we store them. Okay. Every year. Yeah. Pick up and a we few buy new more. fixtures. We buy more this yeah. year. Yep, we kind of just pick things up along the way and then Tetris them back into our storage unit when it's <laughs> all done. <laughs> well, I want to wrap up. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the big prom dress giveaway and we're going to touch on Touch Attract. Ooh, nice play on words in just a minute. But before we do that, give us give us the meat and potatoes one more time, Corey. The, the, the dates again for my girlfriend's closet, the tickets, everything one more time. Okay, so, so preview party, March Thursday, March 14th. Tickets are on sale at both UPS stores, $40. Uh, that gets you into the preview party event. Uh, we are open to the public for free. Entr entrance is free March 15th through 17th. Uh, we are located at the old Hastings building on Ninth Street between uh, Mission and Chelan. And then we open up one more time on Sunday from 1 to 3 after okay. the free shop. Good. Uh, real quickly, I want to talk about the prom dress giveaway. We all know prom is expensive between the ladies got to buy the dresses. Ladies have to buy the dresses. And the guy's got to rent the tux. Something's wrong with that. <laughs> and uh, and the limo and the dinner and everything. If you're if you're a kid, I'm sure you're fine. If you're a kid, it, it runs dough. It runs seriously dough. So you guys have been doing the prom dress giveaway. Talk about that real yes, quick. Yes. So that is the weekend after my girlfriend's closet. Same location, March 23rd through 24th. It's actually a two-day event. We've always done it just for one year. And we, you know, kids have sports and other things to do on Saturday. Sometimes work. So we're extending it to Sunday. Uh, we have over a thousand dresses to give away for free, no questions asked. You just need to bring your student ID. Last year we gave over 200 dresses away uh, to girls, Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Kashmir, Chelan, Leavenworth, Manson. They came as far as Omak, Okanagan, and Brewster. Um, and so, you know, people are lined up at the door. And we also have a raffle during the event um, to give away dinners, tickets, flowers. Uh, Parsons does uh, photo packages. Uh, so there's lots of things to choose, you know, put your ticket in the mm -hmm. raffle and while you're waiting to try on a dress, you know, you may win something to complete your ultimate prom experience, hair, nails, etc. And actually, uh, yesterday we just got word that Bella Sarah will be donating 44 brand new dresses wow. valued wow. over $11,000. Wow. Wow. So many of the dresses are, you know, donated from, you know, community folks, um, people who have been to prom, you know, their kids are graduated and, you know, they have a closet full of prom dresses. But Bella Sarah and then Queen Formal that's over in the Eastern Atchee Mall opening up on March 1st. Um, they've also do donated quite a few dresses. And we have dresses in all sizes. All, all sizes. colors. Mm -hmm. And shoes and jewelry, they get all of, mm -hmm. all of that. And we also have seamstresses on site. Oh, that's a great, yeah. Everybody wants to look perfect. And so yeah. mm -hmm. so sure it's, it's, it's a really fabulous event. It really is. And it's a great way to kind of end the girlfriend's closet run. Uh, with the prom dress giveaway. So, and North North Cascades Bank is the sponsor for that event. Prom dress giveaway one more time is? March 23rd and okay. 24th, Saturday and Sunday. So it's a two day event. Uh, you can find more information on our website and our Facebook page. And again, it's at the Old Hastings building, just like my It is at the old, old Hastings building. And if you want to donate dresses, prom dresses, you can drop them off at Banner Bank. Uh, my girlfriend's closet prom dress giveaway while they're here, and I know it's, it's not until summertime or a few months away anyway. <laughs> uh, touch a truck. We've been involved in touch a truck. We bring our uh, NCW Life Channel broadcast van down there and let the kids play with it. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll have you back on to talk about touch a truck a little bit more in depth as we get closer to it, but just plant that seed where and when and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so, so touch a truck is actually Callie's, Callie's big project. She's okay. heading that up this year. Uh, but the big announcement about Touch a Truck is it is actually in a brand new location. 
We've been at the Town Toyota Center for years, and this year we are taking over Wenatchee Valley College's many parking lots. Okay. So, uh, Wenatchee Valley College, and then this, it's also on a new weekend. So, it's going to be March 18th. That's the third weekend in May, or May, May 18th, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, and it'll be the third weekend in May rather than the second weekend. Okay. So, a little bit of a switch up, but there's lots of new things coming with that. And you can come back and talk about about that in depth. Absolutely. Um, Hopefully, Gally will yeah. be here. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Well, one more thing before we let Kate and uh, Corey go, and I'm, I'm going to let you girls pitch your product. Sell uh, Women's Service League for those people who aren't a member and may think about this might be a good group yes. to, that does good work. Sell Women's Service League of Wenatchee <laughs> to our audience who wants to do the honors. Well, I'm Let's just get gonna, some recruits. Just going to say that I've only been involved for four, four years. And my first year wasn't all that involved, just helping with Girlfriend's Closet. But it has been the best experience and way to meet wonderful women, dedicated women. And this valley is known for giving. And you, you truly see that through Women's Service League. And there, I'm probably one of the oldest people involved. So it's young people and, too. And Kate's old only 48. People. Kate's yeah. only 48, so that's... Yeah, my grandson's exactly. only 32. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful, but it is a great organization. Well worth the time you, to get you involved. Have anything to add to that, Corey? I that was you know, that was yeah. so well said. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we it's so amazing to uh, be with such an incredible group yes. of women, all ages. You know, come from all walks of life to you know band together to really help the community make a difference in so many fun mm -hmm. ways. And make lifelong friends. Yep. Definitely. And there's only one requirement, have the right kind of chromosome. <laughs> I'm out. That's They're right. In. You don't count. And don't, if, you're, <laughs> if you're interested in helping us next year, we take new members starting in August. Okay. So August great. through yes. November. Uh, it's great to see you. Kate, you did, you did great. Thank you did you. wonderful. Kate was going, I'm going to be on TV? Well, you were on TV, <laughs> Kate. Trust me on that. Uh, can you do me a favor? Give me a follow-up on how much money you raised when, it's, when my girlfriend's class is all in. Can you Absolutely. send me an email? Let me Absolutely. know how, how you did. We'd love to do that. Good. Yeah. All right. It's coming up. Lots of things going on with the Women's Service League. Join the organization. I wish I could. Yes. What do you do? You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. Dear Mary Maids, just got home from a trade show and I didn't have time to pick up the house. Kids made chili. Jeff did a mud run. Oh, and Winston shredded Teddy's bed. Again, please clean it the best you can. Oh, except for the statue Max made for me. Thanks, Abby. Hi, Abby. Clean kitchen. Clean bath. Clean floor. Naughty cat. Poor Teddy. The statue is precious. You should keep it forever. See you next time, Mary Maids. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. I'm working today. I have got some work to do today. Don't forget, I've got some work for you today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Thanks. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in our community. New beginnings feel great, don't they? Yes, they do. Be a job creator. Goodwill. There's more behind the store. back here live uh, from Studio 7 here in downtown Wenatchee. Dan Kuntz, your host on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Going to show you a live shot from our Steins Hill camera of the uh, Bluebird storage facility uh, out there in Peshassan. This fire, of course, uh, began on Sunday night. It is now Tuesday morning. It is still burning and will continue to burn inside the Bluebird cold storage facility. Uh, the building that is burning right now contains 10 storage rooms uh, that uh, have boxed fruit and pallets, uh, and they're basically just going to let her burn. That's basically the only way they can go about doing it. What caused this fire? We don't know yet, but they have begun the investigation. Chelan County Fire Marshal Bob Plum will be heading up the investigation. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives will be involved as well. Right now, again, we don't know the cause of the fire. Nobody's been injured, but uh, that's going to continue to burn for quite some time. They're just going to let it, the interior of it just 
let her go. There's really not a lot they can do about it. Uh, by the way, Bluebird itself, as you might imagine, is closed, and so is Pashastin high up. That uh, fruit co-op, uh, their offices are closed as well because it's they can't get to it. It's hard to get to their work when you can't physically get to work. We'll have uh, more on the Bluebird fire uh, as this day progresses, and certainly with the news with Grant Olson. All right, let's take a look at your weather forecast one more time. The big story continues to be cold temperatures. That high today of 30 is actually colder than what our afternoon high, what our overnight low is supposed to be. This whole weather thing is just cattywampus. We've gone 32 consecutive days with the high temperature either below normal or well below normal. We set a record low yesterday, uh, 4 degrees, cold temperatures, some snow is going to be coming our way. Uh, basically, tonight into Thursday morning, overall, maybe a couple of inches here in the Wenatchee Valley, uh, Chelan, Manson, the Medhow Valley and farther north, you're going to get maybe upwards of four inches of snow here in Wenatchee, no more than two inches, but still the big story, the cold temperatures. Everybody stay warm out there, stay safe, have a great Fat Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.